Welcome once again. We thank you for being with us on this Sabbath day. It's good to have you here. It, we count it a privilege as God's people to be able to minister to you in your own home and elsewhere. And so we thank our online viewers, our members, and our friends for being with us. Um, we also just want to let you know that we believe that the coming of the Lord is very soon. We also believe that the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all nations, and then shall the end come. And so we count it as a privilege to not only be with you, but we see you as a partner in being able to spread the gospel with us and building up the kingdom of God. Just to point out that each Sabbath morning, we will have our Sabbath school right here on Saturday at 9.30. And so you can join us online for that, as well as following that, we'll have it at 11 o'clock, our divine or worship service, so that you can join us as we praise God together. For those interested in being able to pray, those prayer warriors, uh, come online with us at least. We have a teleconference that you can join us in, um, and that is at 7.30 on Wednesday nights. From 7.30 to 8.30, you'll be able to join in that prayer session. Now, all information will be online. You can join us at maltonsda.com. That's M-A-L-T-O-N-S-D-A.com. Everything is listed there. Just to make a point, I um, want you to know that the Malton Seventh-day Adventist Church and its ministry is a nonprofit organization. And therefore, we rely on your financial contribution to help us to go ahead and expand the ministry and to be able to reach individuals right across. And so we're asking that you'd be very generous as you and our friends and members continue to pour in your tithe and offering, your donations. You can do that by visiting our portal online, or you can go ahead and just save that. And when we meet again at our next earliest gathering, you can bring that in in person. Don't forget that we really appreciate all that you do for us. I just want to take a moment to ask you the question. Have you ever wondered whether miracles still occur? I mean, have you really thought about it? Do miracles still occur? Well, in these unprecedented times, with the introduction of the COVID-19 virus, uh, many businesses are closing their doors. Millions are financially distressed. Thousands are fighting for their lives, and the state, provincial, and federal agencies are bewildered about what's going to happen, how we're going to make it through. Many are saying it will take a miracle to be able to see us through. Well, I want to let you know that God has assured us that you indeed can rest on him, for he is a miracle-working God. And he's told us that miracles still are working. He is still in the miracle-working business. So I want you to join me today as we unpack this beautiful biblical message, Living on Miracle Territory. Let us pray. 
Our Father, we come before you, your throne of grace, because God, you are fully trustworthy, all powerful. You are love. You are able. In you, all things are possible. You are Lord over every situation. No matter how difficult it may seem to us, your children, you are in control. So we come to you, dear Lord, in prayer to ask you for the peace of your presence to cover our minds, our thoughts, as you remind us that the enemy can never steal us from your righteous hands. And to know that your love and power continually surrounds us. Father, we trust in your wisdom and providence to give us health, to give us strength, and to bring us peace. Father, in these challenging times with this virus COVID-19 sweeping across the nations, your words encourage us, for you have said, do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your Lord. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. For Father, we thank you that you are redeeming, restoring God. And we ask, dear Lord, that we give you all our understanding and strength. We claim a victory, dear Lord, over this virus. And we ask that you continually guide our leaders, guide the people of our nations. And dear Lord, be with our care providers. And may we continually seek your guidance, and Lord, grant us, grant us the courage to follow where you lead. This we ask in the holy name of Jesus. Amen. Happy Sabbath, Malton. Happy Sabbath. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I don't know about you, but I am so happy to be here this morning. The song says, victory is mine, victory is mine, victory today is mine. I told Satan to get thee behind mm -hmm. because victory today is mine. If that is your testimony this morning, that come what may, despite what your situation may look like, you are going to give thanks. You are going to claim the victory. Yes. Join us as we lift up our king this morning. Yes. Victory is mine. Name of 
Jesus. Jesus. In, the in the name of Jesus. We have the victory. In the name of Jesus. We have the victory. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Satan will have to flee. We just need to grab it. It's there for the taking. I don't know about you guys, but I've been watching the news lately. Mm. And boy, oh boy, every night, every day, I'm checking my phone and I'm seeing, wow, wars, rumors of wars, mm. famine, corona. Mm. Wow. Scary times ahead. Mm -hmm. But I don't know about you. In these times, I want to find myself where? In the, in the presence. presence of the Lord. Amen. Because in the presence of the Lord, that's where there's healing. Yeah. Yes. That's where conviction takes place. Lives are changed in the presence of the yes. Lord. That's where I want to be. Amen. There is nothing like the presence of the Lord. Sometimes you got to convince yourself. Yes. Mm. There is nothing like the presence of the Lord. Mm -hmm. As we seek his face, he is here in this place. There is nothing like the presence of the Lord. Praise team. Help me out with that. There's nothing like, nothing like. There is nothing like the presence of the Lord. There is nothing like. There is nothing like the presence of the Lord. There is nothing like the presence of the Lord. This is my favorite part. It says, as we seek His face, as we seek His face, He promises to be here. He is here in this. There is freedom. There is freedom in the presence of the Lord. Somebody needs to be free today. There is freedom in. There is freedom in the presence of the Lord. If you're to take it, just grasp it. As we seek His face, as we seek His face, He promises to be here. He is here.
in one voice. Sweet. today, Malton. Amen. 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 I'm going to invite you just for this moment to turn with me in Scripture to Acts chapter 3. It's Acts chapter 3, and let's look at verse 1, and uh, going on down uh, to just about uh, verse 6. Um, 6 or 7. We'll, 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 we'll read through this. It says in the Word of God, it says, Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour or three o'clock. And a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful, to ask alms or gifts of them that entered into the temple, who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked an alm, asked a gift of them. And Peter fastened his eyes upon him with John and said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something from them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such that I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. I've entitled this message, Living on Miracle Territory. Won't you bow your head with me as we pray together? Father in heaven, we're so grateful that we can come into your presence and open up your holy word. Even as, Lord, our nation reels and our globe reels of this uh, uh, pandemic, we ask, Lord, that you would encourage our hearts by reminding us that miracles still exist. Bless us today in Jesus' name. Amen. Despotic and weary, he lingers along the dusty, beaten path of an unforgiving society. His clothes announce no accolades of a respected merchant. His feeble and outstretched hands don't seem to pen the story of a well-to-do aristocrat. His eyes are shamed to the invasion of what was once a tear, utter unspeakable tones of a wounded and broken spirit. Day after day, he is passed by. Day after day, the monotony of his determined efforts to survive have seemed to, to delude his sense of reality. Day after day, he is mocked and ridiculed and deceived into believing that his paralytic state is a result of his personal sin. Day after day, his, in, his inner being cries out for help, cries out for healing, cries out for a miracle day after day. Luke, the author of this book, the book of Acts, has somehow capsulated this seemingly grim story at a point where the Christian church was thriving and the gospel ministry had gained momentum. The profound declaration of Jesus as he stood on the Mount of Olives prior to the ascension inscribes the words of hope on the hearts of the discouraged disciples. He says it this way in Acts chapter 1 and verse 8, But he shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and he shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto uh, the uttermost parts of the earth. This was in no way a statement of exclusion. 
It wasn't a statement of an exclusive privilege, but rather Jesus was making it clear that somehow the gospel of the kingdom, the gospel, the good news, would be able to go out to a dying and deluded world. I think we can all identify that with that today when we look around what's happening today, that, that the gospel needs to be heard to give hope to somebody. He says that this gospel must be preached. It must go forth to the ends of the world. And just as a builder who levels the soil before uh, erecting the edifice of grandeur, as he works tirelessly to stabilize the foundation, so Jesus, being the rock on which we stand, unmovable, unshakable, lays a foundation for the miracle that would be wrought in chapter 3. Luke describes this lame man. His description of the lame man laying at the gates of the temple does not seem to depict a man who's had it all, but rather tells a story of a man who has been plagued by sin. It could not even get a welfare check if he wanted. A man who was despised and scorned even among men. It tells the story of a beggar. A beggar lame from his mother's womb. A beggar who was brought to the gates of the temple called beautiful at the ninth hour or three o'clock. A beggar who was not placed there by accident, but a beggar that was placed there by choice. You'll find throughout our lives that there are going to be times where you and I must rely on somebody else to position us for what God is about to do in our lives. And so, so we're not islands here. God has called us to rely on each other, and there are times you're going to need that help. History records that the Christian community in Jerusalem and its leaders were faithful to establishing hours of prayer uh, in, in the temple. Uh, it, it's, it's so important that in our lives, we set aside time just to pray. Uh, you will never understand the value of prayer until you begin to pray. This particular time of prayer was a second to the third, second, excuse me, uh, was a second of three hours of daily prayer. And it appears that the same time in which Daniel prayed in Daniel chapter 6 is what is being used here. Solomon, uh, it was Solomon, excuse me, who, when he prayed, cried to Jehovah in 2 Chronicles chapter 6, and begged that if our people uh, would turn towards the temple and pray, then God would forgive their sins, he would answer their prayers, and he would go ahead and heal their land. My friends, the promise is still effective to us today, that if we were to turn our hearts to Jesus in prayer, we will not only get forgiveness of sin and cleansing us from all unrighteousness, but God will deliver us from whatever it is that we're dealing with praise him today what a wonderful God we serve we must also understand and it must also be understood that the beggar's request for arm or 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 gifts or money if you will was not unusual for it was the very act of prayer and gift giving two equally important works of piety that is at the heart of the Jewish writ thus it is not surprising to find the beggar gathering and gathering himself with those who he loves and those who have taken him there at the gate of the temple, waiting for some blessing, waiting maybe for just a blessing or something regurgitated from the belly of piety. Somebody knows what I'm talking about. When you need a helping hand, you have somebody there to help you. Saints, our church must be careful. Uh, saints, we must be careful. Believers, you've got to be careful uh, so that we don't engage in spiritual interjection. You know what I'm talking about. Being so blessed by God, yeah. getting so much. Yeah. We're so blessed that we become, uh, that, that, that we forget about other people. In fact, we are blessed not for ourselves, but God blesses us to become a blessing to someone else. God comforts us to become comforters. We ought not simply get all we can and can all we get and sit on the lid, but God gives us these blessings so that we can share it with someone else. God has given us enough bread to feed the multitude, so to speak, and so he requires that we especially in times like these help each other in any way possible now we understand that they're calling for social distancing we understand that but call somebody check on them 
Let them know that you love them. It may be an elderly person. Drop a bag off by their door. Let them know that you care. It just may be that you may be the very Christ that they need. The beggar was begging before the temple gates. Yet somehow this day, somehow this day, the entire direction of the beggar's life would be changed in a moment. A beggar asking just for a little money, just for something to make it through the day. A beggar who accidentally found himself on miracle territory. Uh, And you see, whenever you are a beggar, whenever a beggar comes in contact with a divine giver, things have to change. Oh, I've got to, I, I, I got to just let you know, just, 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 if you don't believe me, just ask the prostitute who found grace in the eyes. Uh, uh, she prostrated herself before the heart of a great lover. Uh, just ask the woman who found a medicine cabinet in the hem of his garment. Just ask the thief, if you will, who found grace in the eyes of a suffering Messiah or the young preacher such as myself who found a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. If you don't know, just ask somebody. Thank Jesus, we serve a God who is a problem solver, a way maker, a barricade breaker, a habit taker. Thank God that he's still in the miracle working business. One ought not be, though, concerned or consumed with how the beggar arrived on miracle territory. I don't care if he got there by hobbling and maybe by limping or crawling. It doesn't matter if he was carried there. You see, when we begin to live on miracle territory, things begin to happen. All you've got to do is get there. The Bible offers no explanation as to who this man was or where he came from or who carried him there. It doesn't seem to be preoccupied with his ethnicity, his social status, his family background, education, religion, or color, yellow, red, black, or white, even if his mind ain't right. It is not simply concerned about anything, but it simply speaks of a dysfunctional man trapped in a functional, dysfunctional world and how he stumbles upon a functional God who's able to bring about a miracle in his life all because this man positioned himself on miracle territory you see in order for you and I uh, to live on miracle territory uh, we've got to do what the man did we've got to begin to position ourselves I want to just give you a little bit of a spiritual adjustment here as we look at Acts chapter 3 and verse 1 the Bible says it this way now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer being the ninth hour it says while Peter's declaration silver and gold have I not but such that I have give I thee speaks volumes to God's matchless power and his ability the other proponent to this fact is contingent upon the fact that we've got to position ourselves to receive the blessing or receive the miracle it's important to recognize though folk that positioning here is not demonstrative or talking about your location but it rather talks about your disposition it's your mindset or your state of being and so when we talk about positioning we're talking about getting yourself right with God and while it's easy to focus on Peter and his willingness to be used by God. I choose to turn my attention to the beggar. The reason for this is because I don't see many Peters in the world today. Uh, But what I see are beggars, beggars who are looking just for little bread, beggars uh, uh, standing at the gates of eternity day after day, begging maybe just for a little comfort in an uncomfortable home, Uh, beggars uh, looking for just a little peace among the storm, Uh, beggars uh, look for a little grace uh, from an ungracious manager beggars who uh, are looking for just a little salt in a salted or unsavoring society begging just for a little money in an unstable economy begging for a little healing in a, in a pandemic situation begging for a little love to mend the brokenhearted begging oh i'm so glad that we serve a god who does not look at the outward appearance, 
but a God who looks on the heart. You see, while this man asked for money, uh, just something temporary to tie him over, and maybe just to get him through the day, God, the one who sits high and looks low, uh, looked beyond the beggar's want and began to hear the cry of his heart and gave the beggar what he needed. You see, God didn't look at his wants. God looked at his need and in that moment gave him a miracle. How then do you and I position ourselves? Do you need a miracle today? I suspect you do. And if you need a miracle today, then you've got to learn to position yourself on miracle territory. The question is, how do we position ourselves on miracle territory? I want to posit to you three uh, very short things that you need to do to position yourself on miracle territory. The first that you've got to do is you've got to make the best of a bad situation. Praise God. The Bible tells us in Acts chapter 3 and verse 2, and a certain man laying from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful, to ask an arm of them that entered into the temple. I want to say to you that this man could have given up on life. The Bible said he was laying from his mother's womb. He could have said to himself, well, this is how it is, and this is what it's going to be. Therefore, I don't want to do anything anything about it. Let me just lay here and wallow in my despair. But no, he allows individuals to bring him daily to the gates of the temple to be able to, 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 to ask of something from God. It's interesting that this man made the best of a bad situation. Didn't complain and didn't say, poor me, poor my. And some of us may oftentimes have the approach where we look at the cup half empty. Well, I'm letting you know that you ought to start looking at the cup half full. For we find out that in everything we should always give thanks for it is the will of God concerning us. James chapter 1 and verse 2 to 4 says that we should count it all joy when we fall in diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of our faith worketh patience. But let patience have a perfect work, that we may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. And if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not. You've got to learn to make the best of a bad situation. Booker T. Washington, as he was trying to enter school, went to visit the dean the dean was a Caucasian gentleman, and the dean in that time looked at Booker T, intending that he should not be able to be admitted, said to Booker T, listen, why don't you go into the next room and just clean up the place just a little bit? Uh, and so Booker T uh, went into the room. He looked around, and he looked at the floor, and it didn't look too good. And so Booker T began to go ahead and wipe the floor, but it didn't look quite so well. So he got out of mop and he started mopping up the floor, but it still didn't look too well. So Booker T pulled out his handkerchief, got down on his knee and began shining the floor. When the dean came back in, he saw what Booker T did and looked at the floor and it never looked so good. He looked at Booker T and said, uh, I didn't have a spot for you, but I'm going to make a place for you. Sometimes we've got to make the best of a bad situation. Uh, number two, I want to let you know something. The next thing we've got to do to position ourselves on miracle, miracle, miracle territory is just to ask for help. Listen to what it says in verse three. Who seeing Peter and John, this is now the man, the beggar, who seeing Peter and John uh, about to go into the temple asked an arm or a gift. Uh, I posit to you that asking demonstrates a recognition of your need. You see, if you don't if you don't recognize your need, you will not ask for help. But this man was not ashamed to ask for help. He stretched forth his faith and he asked, can you help me? Can you give me something? I want to let you know something that God is a God who sits high and looks low. And the Bible tells me that his ears are not too heavy that it cannot hear. And so we should never be shy to ask God for anything. You see, God is so big, he gets to where he's going before he leaves where he's at. God is so is such a God that nothing can overtake him. He understands what you need. And so the Bible tells us, ask and he shall receive. Seek and he shall find. Knock and doors shall be opened unto you. But you've got to ask. You've got to ask. You see, asking tells you that there's a, uh, 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 there, there is a sense of faith that complements your asking. If you ask for help, God says, I will not turn you away. 
The third thing I want to posit to you is that in order to position yourself on miracle territory, you've got to demonstrate a willing spirit. First is, you've got to make the best of a bad situation. Two, you've got to ask for help. Three, you've got to demonstrate a willing spirit. Now look what the Bible says in, 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 in verse 4. In verse 4 and 5, it says, And Peter fastened his eyes upon him with John and said, Look on us. And the man gave heed unto them. I want to suggest to you that if you've ever been downtown, if you've ever been around the homeless, if you've ever been to, with somebody who's been on the street, it's very difficult for them to ask you for something. But the Bible says here that as difficult it was, it says that Peter fastened his eyes upon him with John and said, look on us. See, it wasn't enough for Peter to say, listen, the man is embarrassed for asking. He says, look me in the eye when you talk to me. You see, the Bible says that the man didn't turn away. He didn't look at Peter and said, how dare you in my time of need? Why would you do this to me? The Bible says that man gave heed. See, having a willing spirit rather than trying uh, to, to pull back is so important. You've got to be able to allow yourself uh, to be humble because I'm told in the word of God, when you humble yourself, the Lord will lift you up. Amen. Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 19 says, but if you are willing and obey, he shall eat of the good of the land. You see, when you're willing, your willingness is interwoven with obedience. It leads to God doing something in your life that you could not do for yourself. You see, your willingness leads to surrender. This is the way that we, you and I, uh, impact the world when we demonstrate a willing spirit. The fourth and final thing is that we've got to then expect great things. Uh, there's, no, there's no need to ask if you don't expect something coming your way. Uh, th th there's no reason to beg if, in fact, you're not willing to accept that God can do something. Uh, and so you've got to ex 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 expect great things. The Bible says it this way, and he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something from them. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 tells us, faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Uh, you, you see, it is performed that which you have not taken place yet. It's stepping out even when you don't see the road underneath you. You've got to expect great things from God. There's a story that Admiral Barry Black tells of his childhood while he was at home. They had no food in the home. His mother, a woman of faith, began setting the table, looked at Barry and said, Go ahead and help me set the table. Barry thought it was a strange thing, for we have no food in the cupboard. Why would we set the table? The mother said, God will provide. And so Barry set the table. Uh, unbeknownst to him, he saw his mother disappear and went outside, and she had gone to the mailbox just as a routine. And when she got to the mailbox, she pulled out a letter. And when she opened the letter, she found very uh, wonderful words. The letter said, you know, Sister Black, I've been thinking about you for a week and I thought I'd just send this small token. And so uh, she was able to receive money that would help them to get through their time when they had no food in the home. But that, that, that's not the blessing though. The blessing was not that they'd received the money. The blessing was this, that one week ago God understood their need before they even understood that they had a need. And one week ago allowed uh, the, the answer to come through the mail. So by the time they realized that they needed food, God was giving an answer. You see, the faithful woman trusted God and she expected big things from him. If you want to position yourself on miracle territory, you've got to first make the best of a bad situation. You've got to ask God for what you need. You've got to demonstrate a willing spirit, and you've got to expect great things. Look at what happens to this man who is now living on miracle territory. The Bible says in, in verse 6, Then Peter uh, uh, said, Silver and gold have I none, but such that I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. 
uh, and he took him, he took him by the right hand and lifted him up and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. I just praise God for this because Peter is there and Peter recognizes that what you need is not me. What you're asking from me, I cannot give you, but I tell you something, I know somebody who can take care of your needs and Peter says, you know what, silver and gold have I not, but such that I have give I thee, I will give you Jesus Christ. And the Bible says in that moment, he took the man by the hand, lifted him up at the sound of faith coming forth. The man's feet received strength. He began to stand up. Not only did he stand up, but the Bible records that when he got up, he leaped up, uh, shouting and praising God, ran into the temple, began bouncing off the walls. The folks saw him and said, this is incredible. We know this man from his mother's womb. This has got to be something great. And when the man and returned and caught hold of Peter and John to hug them, the folk ran upon them. And Peter, recognizing what was happening, looked on them and said, listen now, I want to make this clear. We didn't have something to give to this man except Jesus. But I want to make it clear to you why look on us. Look what the Bible says. I'm going to read it to you. It says here, and as a lame man which was healed held Peter and John, all the people ran together unto them into the porch and called Solomon, greatly wondering. And when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, he men of Israel, why marvel at this? Uh, why look on us so earnestly as if through our own power or holiness we made this man to walk? But the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of our Father, he hath glorified his son Jesus. You see, when God meets you on miracle territory, when you're able to make the best of a bad situation, when you ask God for what you need, when you demonstrate a willing spirit, when you expect great things, God is able to glorify himself, but he does it through the testimony that you give. And so Peter and John said, no, don't come to us. We're not the ones that you ought to praise. You've got to lift up your eyes to the hill from when comes your help. Your help comes from God. Give him the praise. And so when God begins to do good things for you, praise him today. If you believe God's word today, won't you say this simple prayer with me? Lord Jesus, I vow to make the best of a bad situation. I trust and ask you to deliver me. I will do whatever you want me to do. I believe that you will come through and I will praise you while I'm waiting for you. If you pray that simple prayer, I believe that God has a miracle waiting for you. Won't you bow your heads with me? Father in heaven, I thank you so much for your goodness. I pray that now you'd reach out and continue to touch those lives, individuals who are waiting on you. Bring a miracle into their lives. Somebody needs you. And because, Lord, you're God who's not skimpy on giving your blessings, deliver your people. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Until next time, may God bless you and make you a blessing. Church.